in the midst of a storm right now? Pastor John Randall on the way out. You want to know how to come out of the storm today? I'll tell you how. First of all, you have to come to the end of yourself. The sooner you get there, the better off you'll be. The sailors were weary, they were weak, they were unable to change anything, and they knew it. And that's the best place to be this morning, at the end of yourself. Storms and shipwrecks. If you've not experienced one recently, you can be sure one is on the horizon. We all face them, whether it's in the form of a financial collapse or even a family crisis. Some of them are avoidable. Today on A Daily Walk, we join Pastor John Randall in Acts 27. Paul is at sea and on his way to Rome with a couple hundred guys. They encounter an enormous storm that lasted for 14 days, and they end up on the island of Malta. Pastor John is going to relate this to the storms we face in life. We'll see how we get into them and how to get out of them, too. Also, the captain was very persuasive. It says that Paul perceived, but the captain persuaded. And so, the commander, the centurion in charge, listened to the captain. Friends, how many times do we see in the Bible the Lord sending messengers to give warnings to his people? Times where God is long-suffering to warn people from destroying their life. I think of the prophet Ezekiel, who was told by the Lord, but the house of Israel will not listen to you because it won't listen to me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Like the centurion in the story, we can disregard the warnings of God to keep us out of the storm. And we have all kinds of reasons why we disregard the warnings. We say to ourselves, what do they know? They're not in my situation. They're not a professional counselor. What do you know? Well, that may have happened to you, but it won't happen to me. At the core, at the core of disregard for the warnings of God is pride within the heart. We think we're better than that, or we should, or we would never do that, or we're above that, or the passage in the Bible that you're talking about, that doesn't refer to me. That's a dangerous place to be. The Bible says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Has the Lord been sending you warnings from his servants, people that love you, people that have already walked down that road and found it to be empty, who barely made it back alive, and they're saying to you, stop, trust me, I've lived that story, and I don't want to see it happen to you. That was what Paul was doing. He was saying, turn back. Those who find themselves today in unnecessary storms do not discern the signs. They disregard the warnings, but thirdly, they're deceived into thinking they'll escape the consequences. You'll notice in verse 13, when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their desire, they put out to sea and they sailed close to Crete, but not long after, a tempestuous headwind arose called the Eurocliden. Notice what happened. They board the ship in spite of the warning. They set sail and lo and behold, how convenient. The south wind blew softly. Look at that. It made them think we made the right decision. Can you imagine? Ha ha, Paul, look there. What do you know? South wind blowing softly. Hello. You don't know anything, Paul. What do you say now, tent maker? We're setting sail. We're on our way. But I want you to notice a word in the text. The word supposing. Very important word. Supposing they had obtained their desire. They assumed that they were in the clear. They were certain that the consequences of disregarding the warnings had been avoided. Listen carefully, friend. The south wind always blows softly in the beginning. We can be deceived so easily and things seem right at the start and the devil knows that. You start thinking like these sailors. I told those haters. I told those doubters. Look at me. I'm still going. I'm still standing. What do they know at that church? They don't know anything. That pastor's clueless. 
And he's also short. I mean, you don't know anything. Living together before we're married, it's not a bad idea. Dating that non-believer, they said it wouldn't be good. Hey, we're still in love and we're doing fine. You said taking that job would stumble my kids. Ha, my kids are good. You said not being in fellowship would affect my walk with the Lord. What do you know? I've been out of fellowship since March and I'm still good. Verse 14, but not long after. Here's a picture of reaping what had been sown. Not long after. For some, the not long after may be weeks. For others, it could be months. Sadly, for others, it could be years. Everything that they'd been warned about and disregarded, now it begins to come to pass and you're caught in something that you don't know how to get out of. I'm stuck. And the storm, listen, friend, it intensifies. Oh, it seems like everything's fine, but not long after, everything changes. Suddenly, you begin to reap what it is that you've been sowing to. In verse 14, not long after, a tempestuous headwind arose called a Euroclidon. And notice this. So when the ship was caught, it was caught and it could not head into the wind. We let her drive. Suddenly the winds changed. Instead of the southern wind, there was a violent north wind. Historically speaking, the Cretan mountains were located 7,000 feet in elevation, and down from these mountains could come typhonic type winds. And the winds were called the Euroclidon, and they were so strong, it was said that they could blow a ship right out of the water. And I find these words very descriptive. Do you know what happens? When you don't discern the signs? Do you know what happens when you disregard the warnings of God? When you're deceived into thinking that you will escape the consequences, the ship is caught, you're trapped. The ship couldn't go in the direction it wanted to go. It was, listen, out of control. We let her drive, the ship. We just, there was no control over the situation. And that's what happens to a life. You're caught in sin in bondage. You've lost your moral compass. You now have no direction. You're just drifting. But notice what the sailors try to do next in verse 15. And running under the shelter of the island called Clauda, we secured the skiff with difficulty. And when we had taken it on board, they used cables to undergird the ship and fearing lest they should run aground on the Sirtis sands, they struck the sail and were so driven." Let me tell you what this means. The first thing they do is they try, listen, to adjust their course. We're just gonna, we're just gonna alter the course. That's all, that's all it is. This is not, it's not what you think it is. We're not out of control. We just need to adjust our course. We run under the shelter, it says, but that wasn't working. Well, we can get through this. We just need to row harder. We just need to adjust the coordinates. We can handle this. We can get through it. It didn't work. So what did they do next? It says they secured the skiff with difficulty. The skiff was the escape boat that would normally be pulled behind a larger vessel, but they were in danger of losing their potential exit strategy. So we need to bring it on board. We don't want to lose that. And so they sought to secure the skiff. But then it says they attempted to undergird the ship. Do you know what that means? It meant that they would try to tie everything down to make it secure as possible before it broke into pieces. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Are you understanding what I'm saying here? In other words, all of these things reveal what they were doing in their own power to secure what they had and a plan for a potential escape. And how often people do the exact same thing rather than repent and run to the Lord and say, God, I'm turning from my sin. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie this down. I got this. I got this. I can hold this together. And things are coming apart. But you know what happens next? Great loss. It says in verse 18, and because we were exceedingly tempest-tossed, the next day, look at this, they lightened the ship. On the third day, we threw the ship's tackle overboard with our own hands. What happens? 
The storm doesn't let up. It only intensifies. And we were, look at this, forced to throw things overboard with our own hands. Folks, valuable supplies, precious commodities are thrown over. Why? I just need to stay afloat. Throw that over, throw that over with their own hands. And this is something that can happen. When you're in a storm because of disobedience, everything's coming apart. And with your own hands, you begin to overthrow things that were so precious and so valuable. I've known people who will throw their family overboard, their marriage overboard, their kids, their job their church, everything that has been a blessing and a joy in their life, while they try to hold it together, they throw these things overboard and so often never to recover. And if that isn't tragic enough, if you look at verse 20, it says this. Now, when neither the sun nor the stars appeared for many days and no small tempest beat on us, look at this, all hope that we should be saved was finally given up. What a tragic passage of scripture. They couldn't see the sun. They couldn't see the stars, which meant there was no way to navigate out of the storm. The tempest just kept on beating on them to the point, it says that they lost all hope of ever being saved and they gave up. I really don't think that when they decided to disregard the warnings, not discern the signs, and the soft wind blew, they never thought that they would lose everything, especially lose all hope and give up. I don't think that was what they were thinking, but that's where it led. That's the desire of the devil today, friend. He wants to bring you to a place where you are willing to throw all that is worth fighting for and valuable overboard. And then he will leave you hopeless, hoping that you'll give up and be defeated and never recover. Now, perhaps at this moment in this study, you may be realizing that's exactly where you are right now at this moment. Maybe you feel like you're the only person in the parking lot. And you're wondering, is there any hope for me? Because I'm there. And I've got great news for you today. There is hope. And hope has a name. His name is Jesus. Having looked at how they got into the storm, oh, consider with me now how you get out. Yes, please. How do you get out of it? Is there a way out? Is there escape? Yes. In verse 21, After long abstinence from food, then Paul stood up in the midst and said, Men, you should have listened to me, and you shouldn't have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. But I urge you, take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship. For there stood by me, oh, I love this, there stood by me this night an angel of of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve. And he said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar and God has granted you all of those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. However, we're gonna run aground on a certain island. When all hope was lost, when everyone on the boat had given up, Paul stood up filled with the Holy Spirit with a message from the Lord. You want to know how to come out of the storm today? I'll tell you how. First of all, you have to come to the end of yourself. The sooner you get there, the better off you'll be. The sailors were weary. They were weak. They were unable to change anything, and they knew it. And that's the best place to be this morning, at the end of yourself. And then Paul shares with them a dose of reality. He confronts them with reality. He reminds the crew, you know, I did warn you beforehand. This could have been avoided, which implies they were guilty. They were responsible. And if you want to get out of the storm, that's the place to start. You come to the end of yourself and you have to be willing to be confronted with the difficult truth that you're to blame. 
that it's your sin that brought you to this place. It's my sin that brought me into this situation. And admitting that they were in that situation was another step toward being delivered. But also, Paul said, listen, I want you to know something. It's not going to be easy. Paul didn't sugarcoat it for the crew. He made it very plain. He said, there's going to be some loss. That's part of it. But you're going to live. Yeah, you might, that, you're going to have to let that go, but you're going to live and you're going to make it. Yes, it's going to be painful. Sometimes we create these trials and we build these things and we do all of this and then we want God just to just change it like that. Just no consequences. I want to do whatever I want to do. I want to wreck this and I want to destroy that and I just want God to fix it really quickly. It doesn't always work that way. There's time for healing. There's time for rebuilding. But you'll be healed and you'll be rebuilt. It's not going to be easy. But it's going to be worth it. It'll be worth it. Thankfully, Paul doesn't end there. He gives these 275 passengers anchors, if you would, in the storm. He first of all reminded them of God's presence. Paul said, the Lord stood by me. His presence. Listen, you want to get out of the storm? You turn to the Lord and here's what you're guaranteed. His presence to walk you through it. His presence. You won't be alone. He'll be with you. God hasn't forsaken you. Listen, God doesn't turn from us. We turn from him. God doesn't leave us hanging. We're the ones that walk away. But God is always there, even like Dennis sang today. You can come out of the wilderness, friend, if that's where you are. And some of us who've spent some time in the wilderness say the sooner you get out, the better. He not only reminded them of God's presence, but he also reminded them of God's promise. God made a promise to Paul. He said, you're going to make it and everybody with you is going to make it. Paul was anchored in the storm by his faith. He was fully persuaded and he believed what God said. How important it is for us if we're going to come through this storm to listen to what the Lord is saying, to believe what God has said and to remember that he is able. When you go on in the story, you'll need to understand things didn't change overnight for these sailors. The ship kept on driving. The winds kept on pounding. The waves kept hitting the boat. And because things weren't changing overnight, some of the men who were on the ship got worried. And Paul saw that some of them were preparing to abandon ship. This is really important. Don't miss this, friend. Look at verse 30. And as the sailors were seeking to escape the ship, when they let down the skiff into the sea under pretense of putting out anchors from the prow, Paul said to the centurion soldiers, listen carefully, unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the skiff and let it fall off. What do you see here? The sailors are going to try to escape. They're like, hey, Paul, that's great news. We're going to make it. We're going to try this one more plan we've got. Get the skiff, get the lifeboat. Let's get out of here. And Paul said, unless you stay in the ship, you're not going to make it. Unless you let go of your solution and turn to God's, you're not going to make it. You're going to end up right where you're going to sink. If the sailors left, the ship couldn't be managed. They were needed. If they got into that boat and sailed away, that would be the end of them and the end of others. And so what did the soldiers do? It says they cut the ropes of the lifeboat and they let it fall off. Their last ditch effort to try to fix it themselves, they cut the, they cut the ropes. You might be saying, I want the Lord to change things. I want to be out of this storm. I want to do things the Lord's way instead of my own, but I want to jump ship. You can't. You can't. Stay in the boat, friend. You have to let this run its course. You can't control someone else from jumping ship, but you can make a decision to trust God. You have to cut the ropes of escape and in a sense say, Lord, I'm clinging to you. I'm cutting the ropes of my plans 
and I'm trusting in yours. I'm cutting the ropes of my own will, and I'm going to do it your way. Lord, you take the helm of my life. You drive this ship, and if it crashes and I lose the ship, at least I know I have my life in Christ, and it's worth it. And so, as the story goes on, the ship eventually ran aground, and they escaped with their lives. Every single passenger made it and survived, just like the Lord had promised. The ship was lost, the cargo was gone, but their lives were spared. Friend, how do you get out of the storm that you created? You come to the end of yourself, you receive the difficult truth, and you repent, you turn to Jesus and his word and his love for you. You grab hold of the promises found in God's word and you believe them. You cut the ropes of your escape and exit strategies. You let the Lord run the ship where he wants it and then you swim for the shore. I've learned and I'm continuing to learn that God is a redeeming God, that he is a forgiving God, that he is a restoring God. And if you realize today that you are drifting at sea, as it were, you disregarded the warnings. You didn't listen. It's not too late for you to get right with God. It's not too late for you to turn back to him. It's not too late to be saved, to be forgiven, to be restored. It's not going to be easy, but it's so worth it. It's the best decision you could ever make to turn back to God. And some of you today, that may be where you are. And so as we conclude, I'm going to give you the opportunity to respond to the Lord today. And you know who you are. If you're sitting here and this message is hitting you right in the heart, it's for you. It's for you. And if you want to get right with God today, if you want to turn from your sin, if you want to come out of the storm, humble yourself and turn back to him. And the Bible promises that he will restore you. Man, he loves you. Perfectly. And listen, God's not angry with you today. He's not saying, hey, you created the storm. Good luck out there. Take care. Ahoy there, matey. God's not like that. You're on your own. No, he's saying, come on. Come on. You know, the Bible refers to the Lord as the captain of our salvation. I want to encourage you today. Respond to his love. Respond to his grace. He wants to forgive. He wants to restore. Will you turn to him today? Do you want to come out of the storm? It's up to you. Encouraging truths for the storms of life and how to get out of them today on A Daily Walk with Pastor John Randall. Our message goes by the title of A Storm is Coming. As we leave you, we'd like to say how much it means to each of us every time we hear how God is at work in our listeners' lives. It would be so encouraging to hear from you, so please write today while it's fresh in your mind. Our email address is adailywalk at gmail.com. You can call us toll free at 877-242-0828. That's also the number to call if you'd like a copy of today's message. We can send that to you for a cost of just $5. Again, reach us at 877-242-0828. You can also visit our website to listen to today's message at adailywalk.org. And while you're there, you'll notice many other available resources in the e-store. Well, Pastor John's wife, Michelle, has a new book for women of all ages. It's Perfected, A Journey Through Proverbs 31. Now, this is the first in a series of five mini Bible study books, ideal for small group summer study, one-on-one, or even for mother and daughters. We're offering it right now for the reduced price of $10. Call 877-242-0828 or go to adailywalk.org for easy online ordering. 
You know, here at A Daily Walk, we look to the Lord to provide for us and sustain us. We know these are difficult and challenging financial times for many of you, but if God has blessed you with a little extra this month, we'd very much appreciate your support. This would be a wonderful time to hear from you during these summer months. We've tried to make it easy to make a donation online at adailywalk.org or call 877-242-0828. There are some ways we can stay connected. Check out Pastor John on X, formerly Twitter, and Instagram for biblical encouragement throughout the week. Follow him on X, previously known as Twitter, at PJRandall7, and on Instagram at John P. Randall. Then join us next time when Pastor John Randall picks up where we left off in our Through the Bible study here on A Daily Walk. A Daily Walk is a presentation of Calvary South O.C. 